Hey guys, back again to do a little video on engine compartment prep. Just like the other videos, there's gonna be some Subaru specific things in here, and there's gonna be some general things that you can apply to your own builds, no matter what they are. Um, so just to dive right in, uh, the first thing you'll probably notice is this crazy intake setup I've got. I've got a piece of uh, brake duct hose running to my air box with the filter here. And uh, so I've done that so I can actually grab some cold air from outside of the engine compartment via the scoop here on the hood. Um, but really, this is kind of inferior to the stock air box in terms of protection. And if I had the stock gearbox setup that sits in the, the passenger well here and draws from the fender area, I probably would have kept that on the car. And the, the big reason is um, protection from the elements. So your goal with the intake setup should be to prevent ingestion of um, dirt and, and dust, but especially water ingestion can really kill your engine. If you run into a puddle at high speeds and you get a gallon or so of water in the intake track, your engine's done. And there's nothing like the stock airbox setup on most cars to, to prevent that. So if you're going to change your intake setup, you need to be mindful that you're not making things a lot worse uh, in terms of protection. So here I've, I've got some water drains and traps so that if it is raining out or I do ingest water through the scoop, this is on a downhill track when, it's, when the hood is closed, so the water will run out and drain into the inner fender area, so I'm not getting all this up in the air filter area. Um, the idea is that you don't have to pull into service every time and either replace the filter or beat it out or make sure it's not waterlogged. You don't want to have to touch that. Um, and in that respect, the, the stock system is actually best. Another easy area to uh, prep is the hood prop rod. Uh, so if you don't have struts and you've got a prop rod holding your hood up, it's probably held in by one or two little plastic clips. And the prop rod will bounce out under extreme conditions and you'll have it bouncing around the engine bay. And that's exactly what happened to this car. There's actually a V in the back of the prop rod from where it dug into the alternator pulley for half a stage before we were able to finish up and pull off and secure the prop rod again. So our simple fix for that was to just have looped zip ties down here and they go around the brackets on the end so it's an additional two three things that actually have to come loose for the prop rod to start bouncing around the engine bay the ideal solution is hood struts and uh for subarus i know they're pretty cheap they're like 60 dollars. you can get a set of hood struts that bolt into the rear fender mounts and actually eliminate the prop rod um i don't really like that choice i'll rather keep the prop rod and, and deal with it during service but some people like the the simplicity of the strut setup we've also got driving lights on our hood they're removable driving lights so they're secured with zeus fasteners and the electrical connection is just a mil spec quick connector that i bought off of amazon for about 15 dollars and that allows us to thread on and off the cable very simply and then this whole light assembly comes right off and then it's just capped here and it's a waterproof cap so you don't have to have dedicated wiring for this or, or just have a taped down uh, connector uh, weather pack would be a common connector that you see just try to taped underneath the, uh, the hood or something to keep these lights on and off and then underneath here we, we do have a weather pack in the rear, but as far as the harness itself, we've given ourselves a little bit of slack, but it's tied down so it can't really bounce into anything important in the bay. For accessory and wire cleanup, I haven't done too much wiring wise to the engine harness. Um, I want to keep that as stock as possible, so if something goes wrong or the harness gets cut, I can replace it without spending hours and hours replicating what I did to clean up the harness before. Um, I have eliminated the power steering pump entirely and this I've actually converted it to an electric power steering setup and I can go over that in a later video uh, but what that means is I've, I've got one less accessory here I've taken the AC out on the other side which is somewhat contentious with my co-driver uh, but 
that means that the only accessory that I'm driving is actually the alternator. And it's a super simple, short belt, and there's not a lot going on here. We can get in and we can fix this very easily or toss another belt on and be back on the road within a few minutes at best. One area where you'll get as many opinions as there are people in the conversation is with hood latches. So we've got the AeroCatch style hood latches, which are flush mount arrangements with the pin inside the mount. And I personally like them. They're a little bit fiddly on setup and alignment, um, but once they're on, they're very easy to tell if you've got the hood pin secured or not. It's really hard to drive away with this giant flag sticking up in the air um, without you actually noticing that your hood is unlatched. One of the problem areas with this is they're very easily bound up by dirt, which obviously you come across a lot on a rally stage. So the, the mechanisms inside, if they get a little bit of dirt in these, in these hinge areas, it'll be very hard to close this latch again. And so we actually lubricate these with WD-40 um, at almost every service to make sure they open and close properly. Um, one of the other arguments against these is they're almost impossible to open in the event of a crash. So if you've got any sort of crash that involves the, the hood structure or the radiator structure where the pins are mounted, they're going to be very, very difficult to get these off without actually breaking them apart with a, a hammer or a screwdriver or a pry bar or something like that. So be aware of that if you're running these style latches. So here you can see the copper nickel brake lines that we have and they come right off the master and they run right into the interior of the car. We actually have all our brake lines running through our proportioning valve uh, which is mounted in the dash structure and then all the lines stay inside the interior for as long as possible until they come back out for the uh, connections to the calipers and that just eliminates the chances of a rock strike or, or damage from an external collision. Also out here we can see all the tie downs along the length of all the wiring runs to make sure this wire can't bounce anywhere that we don't want it to. We want to keep the harness from being stressed um, because any sort of bending motion is, is going to eventually fatigue the harness and cause issues. Down here we can see some of the engine harness connections and also the connections for the O2 sensors which some of them come dangerously close to the axle in this area so you want to make sure they're very well tied away so that nothing nothing can uh, possibly drop down and get into that rotating assembly and rip the harness apart. Also all our connections for our positive battery runs are well booted and insulated and the connections are lubed up with dielectric grease. Here too we've got some eighth inch strut tower caps that are welded on as reinforcement and for Subarus this is really all you need to be able to handle medium sized jumps without too much trouble chassis wise and this reinforcement actually runs all the way over to the fender area and is welded all around the strut cap and also underneath too. One thing that's easy to overlook when you're in the middle of building the car and say oh I'll come back to it later and you really shouldn't is making sure you're plugging all of the, the firewall holes and the engine compartment holes you're creating so you, you make sure you seal off it, the engine compartment from the interior and, and from the elements in the fender areas too. So you give less ingress points for water and things like that and you make sure your, your cabin is sealed off as well because the first time you have an exhaust leak and you've got to deal with fumes in the cabin for stage after stage after stage you're really going to regret not sealing that properly. So take the time to do that especially while the engine's out and you're cleaning things up. On this car I've installed an oil cooler to attempt to prolong the notoriously short EJ25 engine life and we'll see if it helps long term. But I've taken the time to route it in such a manner that I can very quickly get this engine out 
if I need to swap engines and the worst happens, or if something happens to the oil cooler, I can get at all of those components. So I make sure I have uh, the right plugs on hand if the lines start leaking and I don't have a replacement for the lines. So I don't have to retire from the event just because of a, a leak I can't fix. The way this oil cooler is mounted, and perhaps you can see that, perhaps you can't, but the lines are coming in from the side right around the radiator. So if I had to, I could just pull the top bolts for the radiator, tip the radiator back, and the cooler would come out with the engine assembly. Um, again, if the worst happened and I had to swap in my spare engine. But always be thinking about what you're going to do if a component fails because you could build this amazing uh, piece of hardware, but if it's a mousetrap and it fails and it takes nine hours to take apart, it, it didn't really gain you anything. When you're going over your car mechanically, be aware of uh, bolts and hardware that require special tools. On this Subaru, for example, there's a large, and it's very hard to see, there's a large Allen plug to get the clutch uh, for pivot shaft out. And it's the only Allen of that size on the entire car, I believe. And it causes some, some heartache when we had to do an engine swap. And if we hadn't had that Allen, we would have been in real trouble. So I'm gonna take it out and I'm gonna show you what I'm going to, to do to make this easier for me, myself next time and, and show a little trick you can use if you don't have the right sized Allen. So here I've got that Allen plug out of the transmission. And this is a 10 millimeter Allen, this is a larger Allen. And if I didn't have that, that uh, particular tool, I would have been sunk trying to get the drivetrain apart. So one of the things you can do if you are stuck and you do not have the tool is for these Allen plugs, this is the same size head as an M6 bolt. So if I have an M6 bolt handy and I've got two M6 nuts here, I can double nut the bolt and use this as an Allen driver to get the nut off. Um, unfortunately, we had exactly these and they were soft nuts and a soft bolt and it just stripped out and the nut was too tight. So I've got another plan for this and that's to just weld a 14 millimeter nut onto this so that we can use a regular socket and ratchet to take this off and, and not have to worry about having that special Allen head with us um, at the rally. So now I've got the nut all welded on to the plug and this is the same size as all of the bell housing bolts that are on this engine. So if I ever have an issue and I've got to yank the engine, I can go right from the bell housing to the um, clutch fork pin cover here and not have any special tools or anything required. So it makes it that much easier to get the drivetrain out and in. So that's it for this video. I hope you found some helpful tidbits. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. And uh, I'll see you on the next video where we talk about interior prep.